Hi, my name is Sergey Gusev. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to paint a portrait of an older lady in oils on canvas. But before I start, I want to remind you that you can download the full video tutorials from my webpage or get individual online classes in painting. If you want to improve your skills and get better in portraits, check out my webpage. I will provide you a personal guidance throughout the entire painting process, explain you each step, tell you which materials to use, how to properly mix colors for the skin tones, and finish the facial details. To get more information, just follow the links in the description. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, find me on Instagram and Facebook. Ok, I think we are ready to start off. So, let's begin. The first part of this tutorial is called the underdrawing. I start working on this portrait from a very quick sketch on canvas with a graphite pencil. The size of my canvas is 60 times 50 cm which is about 24 times 20 inches. I stained my canvas before painting. I used titanium white and raw umber to paint away to slightly darken the surface and give it a warm shade, because the skin tones are quite warm in this portrait and they are also much darker than pure white. After that, I let it dry for a few days and now it is ready for painting. You can start working on the drawing with either charcoal or a graphite pencil or even a brush, which needs some experience of yours. If you don't have enough experience, I would suggest using a graphite pencil. Don't take a very soft pencil. I personally prefer using HB or B pencils, as they are not very soft. In the beginning of any painting, I care mostly for two basic things – composition and proportions. If you don't do it at the beginning, then later, when you start painting, it's gonna be very difficult to change the proportions. The easiest way is printing out the picture you will use the same size as your portrait, and literally measure proportions with a ruler. It is a very simple way for beginners. I always first outline the overall silhouette of the head, eye sockets, but not the eyes or eyelashes, only the big shapes. I also outline the root and tip of the nose, and shade a little the core shadow on the tip of the nose, to add some volume. I do it with a few very light lines and don't press the pencil hard. I do it just because tone helps us to separate one plane from another one. I quickly start drawing the eyes, both of them almost at the same time. I draw the irises, pupils and eyelids. Now you see that the shadows added some volume to the head. The head is not simply flat anymore. We already see lights and shadows. So the volume slowly shows up. Spend more time on the eyes. Draw the eyelids a little bit. Upper and lower ones. Even at this stage it is necessary to think a little about the structure of the head. As I mentioned, you should remember that there are big planes of the head, which make up the shape and volume. I also think it is quite important to make a good composition of the portrait. Don't make the head too big or too small. It shouldn't be bigger than life size. If it is huge, the head will fall out of the canvas. If it is tiny, it will drown in lots of empty space around. So, it should be close to life size. You can slightly darken the pupils of the eyes and irises. Don't press the pencil too much. 
shade the core shadow on the tip of the nose, nostrils, lower planes of the winds of the nose. It will become more three-dimensional and therefore stand out. Now I am finishing the underdrawing. It is time to move on to the second stage. Usually I don't spend much time on the underdrawing, but if you want you can spend two or even three hours. Begin to paint in oils only when you are satisfied with your underdrawing. Okay, I think it is time to finish the underdrawing and start making an underpainting. And now I'm going to tell you which paints, brushes and mediums to use. I also must say that if you use charcoal, it is necessary to spray it with fixative. Otherwise, it will mix up with paints and make mud on your canvas. If you use a graphite pencil, especially if you haven't put a lot of graphite on your canvas, it is not necessary to spray it. I am not spraying my underdrawing. Okay, let's continue working. I will make the underpainting with a few colors. I am mixing raw amber, yellow ochre, and add a bit of burnt sienna. I get a fairly warm ochre brownish color, which is always possible to darken by adding more amber or make the color a little lighter by adding yellow ochre. As a medium, I am going to use pure turpentine. It is better to begin working on the underpainting from the large dark spots. I am not painting the details. I start from the core shadow on the side surface of the nose, in the eye socket and on the side surface of the head. I am using a middle sized bristle brush. We don't use white paint at this stage. If you use white, the color loses transparency, becomes a little muddy, sometimes dirty, and also white dries for a long time. And at this stage it is important to make a fast color sketch and start the next stage, where we have more time to work on the details. Don't forget to always compare the shadows with the darkest shadow and the lights with the lightest light. Remember that the shadows are always darker than lights. This is the basic rule and you should always remember it, whatever you paint or draw. And sometimes beginners don't know it. Mix up lights and shadows. The portrait turns out inexpressive and flat because the volume is lost. So try to understand what you paint. A shadow or light? How dark or light the shadow is? And also compare it with the other lights and shadows. Therefore it is also important to remember about the light source. What is the light source? When we paint, a head is usually lit with a light from a window, the scattered light of the sun. Sometimes you can paint and draw with the electric light. But the best option is using the scattered light of the sun. This light always comes from above and has a cold tint. So when making an underpainting, our goal is to make the right tonal values. Make sure that the shadows are darker than the lights. If you look at the picture, you will see that the forehead is the lightest spot. The cheeks, cheekbones, the side surface of the face are much darker. So when you paint, it is important to understand which part is closer to light and which is further away. So the closer it gets to the light, the colder and lighter it is. The further away it gets, 
the warmer and darker it becomes. It is very important to remember and understand. Don't forget that the eye sockets are very close to the light source. The chin, lips, nose are further away. So the shadow in the eye socket is one of the darkest in the entire portrait. The shadow in the eye socket is darker than the shadow on the side plane of the head. It adds volume to the head because the dark areas go forward and the side surface of the head, which is a little further away, goes back. This way we see the volume of the head better. I am not going to paint the background right now, because it is already darker than pure white. I quickly darken the shadow in the background and outline the shoulder girdle. Okay, I think we have finished the underpainting. It means it's time to move on to the next stage, which is called blocking in. I'm going to use all the colors from my palette. I will use titanium white, cadmium red, cadmium lemon, crimson. Burnt Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Raw Amber and Ultramarine. I'm going to use a middle-sized bristle brush. So, let's begin. I'm using a limited palette, only 7 colors. I believe that for beginners, it is more simple and convenient to use less paint. Because you need some experience in painting to find out which colors you like better and how to properly mix them. Therefore, it is better to take few simple paints. And believe me, they are very sufficient to execute a portrait. Again, I'm going to start from the dark spots, shadows. Because it is easier than painting the light skin tones. I mix some burnt sienna with raw amber. At this time, I am not using any medium at all. This layer should be thicker than the previous one. The darkest shadow is in the eye socket because it is closer to the light source. And so, as you remember, shadows get darker, getting closer to the light source. When we paint a portrait of an older person, we can use more textures on the face. Make the planes of the head rougher than when we paint a young person with very smooth skin tones. So, I'm not using medium and painting with hard bristle brushes. After I've worked on the shadows, I start painting the lights of the face. When you paint, remember, as I said in the previous part, that the forehead will be the lightest and coldest part, and also the tip of the nose. All the other parts of the head will be darker. So, when we paint the side plane of the head, or chin, we must understand that it is not very light. So, don't add too much white. When I work on the skin tones, I don't use any umbers or any browns or blacks. I use mostly three colors. Cadmium red, Cadmium lemon and ultramarine. Of course, I add more or less titanium white. Don't forget to combine cold and warm color. 
usually beginners don't see well cold teens. So you can mix even colder teens on purpose. Don't stack in one place. Work over the entire portrait. If you look at the picture, you will see that the forehead is the lightest spot, the cheeks, cheekbones, the side surface of the face are much dark if you compare. So when you paint, it is important to understand which part is closer to the light source and which is further away. So the closer it gets to the light, the colder and lighter it is. The further away it gets, the warmer and darker it becomes. It is very important to remember and understand. We almost never use pure white in portraits. Sometimes highlights in the eyes may be close to pure white. But usually they are slightly darker and cooler. I think it's time to start working on the lights of the face with a smaller brush. I started blocking in from darker tones. And now I see that it is necessary to make skin tones slightly lighter. I'm mixing titanium white, cadmium lemon and red to get a cool tint and apply it to the light areas of the face. At this stage the painting looks a little rough, but we can always soften brush strokes. When we begin the next stage of the painting, you will see that it is very easy to make the skin tone smoother. But now it is more important to get the right tonal values and construction of the head. For example, the nose looks quite rough, but you see that it has a frontal plane, two side planes and a lower one. It is very important to care for the tonal values when blocking in. It means that we should pay attention to the tonal difference between the light and shadow. Just visually compare the light part of the nose and the core shadow on the tip of the nose. You will see that you definitely need to add a lot of white when mixing the light skin tones. The same when we work on any other part of the head. First, find out where the light source is and how far away it is from the part you are working on. The further away it is, the less light that part gets. So the lights will be darker and the shadows lighter. It is quite simple when you understand how it works. When you paint, it is very important to compare all the time. When you paint one part of the head, it is necessary to compare it with another lighter and darker one. Now I'm working on the lower part of the head. And so comparing firstly with the forehead, because the forehead is lighter, and secondly with the shadow in the eye socket, which is the darkest shadow in the portrait. This comparison is necessary in order not to make mistakes in tonal values. If you make this area very dark, then how dark the eye socket should be. And at the same time, if you make this area very light, then you risk to mix it up with the light semitones of the forehead and make tonal mistakes. Because as I said, the basic rule we should follow says that the shadows are always darker than the lights. So to avoid mistakes, please compare the large tonal relations. At the end of this stage, I'm painting the hair, clothes and background. 
and painted the clothes a little abstract. Of course, I also remember that there is a shoulder girdle underneath, which means I care for its construction and proportions. I don't want to paint all those flowers as well as the head. Remember that we have primary and secondary things. The portrait is more important for us, so pay more attention to it. Ok, I have finished blocking in stage. You see that the portrait looks quite finished. Now I'm going to let it dry for 3-4 days and then I will start working on the details of the head, finishing each of them. Of course, I want to devote more time to the eyes as it is the most important detail of the head. I will use a small, thin, round synthetic with a pointed tip and a medium. I will mix demo varnish, linseed oil and turpentine. So let's continue working. I'm going to work on the eyes right now. Let's get a small synthetic. It's very good for small details. So, working on the eyes, you should remember that the eye is basically a sphere. There is a pupil in the center of the eye, surrounded by the iris and the cornea, which is transparent. We don't see it. But we see only a highlight on the surface of the cornea. Usually the light source is cold and therefore the sclera has a bluish shade. So let's add a little cold into the sclera. When you paint the sclera, don't forget at the same time to slightly change the iris. Adjust its shape. If it is too large, you can reduce it. At the same time, if it is too small, don't forget to enlarge it. The eye is surrounded by the upper and lower eyelids from above and below. They lie on the spherical shape of the eye. So they are also semicircular. The light falls on them differently, depending on how the eyeball turns to the light or away from it. So when you paint the eye, remember all the time that the eye is one big shape and all the details, the pupil, cornea, eyelids are on this large form and they all either turn to the light or turn away from the light. So their tonal values change. They become lighter or darker and their color becomes either cooler or warmer. If you remember this, you won't make mistakes. I took a small point in synthetic and correct the shape of the iris. Don't forget that the iris on the edges is darker than it is inside. I'm adding a little more white, raw umber and ultramarine. I have already painted the highlights. They will be a little cold because the light source is cold. The highlight will be very light, but not simply white. I added a tiny bit of ultramarine. When you correct the shape of the upper and lower eyelids, don't forget that, as I mentioned, the eyelids belong to the big form of the eyeball and therefore have a spherical shape too. So when you paint them, you should demonstrate that you understand that the eyelids also have a volume. They have shadows 
and lights. If you ignore it, the eyelets will look very flat. It's gonna be a mistake if you decide painting them separately from the eye. Paint them as a part of the big shape of the eye. It will help you avoid many mistakes. When I paint the lips, I keep the corners of the lips quite soft and therefore the corners go back a bit. The central part of the lips stands out compared to the corners. Because the lips lie on the form of the jaw and teeth. Therefore the central part of the lips goes forward. The corners of the lips go back. When you work on the lips, it is very important to understand that the upper lip will always be darker and warmer than the lower one, which is lighter and colder. The highlight on the lower lip will be quite cold, but not simply white. You see that the lower lip is much lighter. Its edges are very soft and almost merge with the skin tones. The upper lip, although it is dark in tone, isn't simply black or dark brown. Actually, it is partly in a semitone. The other part is in a shadow. So, you have to choose different colors. For the upper lip, you should choose darker, slightly reddish brownish colors. For the lower lip, colder colors. Add more ultramarine, even a little more white somewhere. Cadmium Red and Burnt Sienna. Now I start working more on the hair. In general we should work on the hair only when we have its big spot. Because if you start drawing each single hair, you risk losing the integrity of the spot. And break it down to multiple details. Don't forget to paint with big spots and look for details in them. Now you can take a small brush and work on the details of the hair. Don't forget to return to the big spot once in a while and check if you haven't destroyed its integrity. To paint the light I mix a little white with yellow ochre and a bit of cadmium lemon. Remember that color doesn't exist without tone. You can paint hair or any other object and ignore tonal values. Color is always lighter or darker. This means tone. At the very end of this tutorial, I want to work some more on the surroundings. We have worked enough on the portrait. Don't forget that we also have other details. Now I start working on the clothes. In this portrait the dress is quite detailed. It has a lot of small flowers. It can be difficult for beginners to paint main details. But I believe it is necessary to know how to draw such a complex pattern and I will give you some tips. First of all, remember that the dress lies on the body. It follows the shape of the body, chest, shoulders and arms. So it is not flat. It also has a volume. The volume, as I said, means light and shadow. So some parts of this dress will be light, some dark. The same happens with the flowers on the dress. They are not just located on the dress, they follow the body's shape. And all of them will be slightly darker or lighter, depending on the plane they are located on. And how it turns to the light source or away from it.
In this painting, the dress gets some direct warm light of the sun. You see this light also in the background. So the dress will be colder in the shadows and semitones and warmer in the lights. This is the basic rule I told you many times. Let's make some final touch-ups all over the painting. Slightly adjust the leaves, hair, and the background. Okay, I think I have finished this painting. So let's take a look at how it turned out. You have just watched my tutorial. I hope it was interesting and inspiring for you. Thumbs up if you like it. You can help me out and share this video with your friends on your favorite social network. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Find me on Instagram and Facebook. Visit my webpage to download the full video tutorials. I wish you good luck with your artworks guys and see you next week.